Hi everyone, my name is James Stagg and this is Tech This Out Meow, a channel dedicated to composites, plastics, and gadgets, and making your own gear right at home. Now, a quick update on some stuff. Um, it's been snowing where I'm at, so going out and testing stuff has been quite difficult, and so uh, I've had to postpone a few things, and finding a range that'll actually let me shoot my armor is also quite difficult. I have a place outside, but just getting there is a trip because of how much snow we recently got so but luckily I found a place really close to my house and by the end of the week I will be going down there and shooting and I also have a week off from work so that gives me a lot of time here soon to be able to build and so I have a lot of projects planned so hopefully I'll have a lot more videos uploaded I'm going to try now to start uploading two videos a week uh, one will be a discussion on the different strengths and characteristics of plastics. Also, any questions people might have. I've actually been getting some interesting questions from people, typically through messages. Some have been posted on the videos themselves, but most of them have been sent directly to me um, on some project ideas, which I really love. I'm glad that people are at least somewhat interested, even though I just started this channel. So I'm really happy about that. And uh, thank you all for sharing and subscribing that are interested in my uh, YouTube. And hopefully you guys learn something about material science or engineering, because I've got a lot, of, like I said, a lot of different projects. And I wanted to go over a few other than the HDPE plate, which is a uh, high density polyethylene and nylon paracord. Very simple. I've got the mold now and I'm actually making the video right now. So that should be up right after this, like a day or two, I'm hoping, because I'll be able to actually go out and test it. I didn't want to do a video where I split it, made it, and then it's just like, okay, well, just wait until spring and we can go and test this stuff. So, but now I have a place. So we're gonna go out and test it, which I'm really excited about because uh, I'm really feeling like I'll be able to stop a nine millimeter with just milk jugs and nylon paracord. So here's hoping, and I'm also going to hopefully really soon be able to get the um, the clay they use it's actually very cheap to test back face deformation now just because you stop a bullet does not mean that you are not in trouble uh, with the amount of energy that that it bullet itself imparts into your body you really have to worry about the kinetic energy that comes with the bullet because you stop it but there's a lot of energy that continues to go in and that's called back face deformation that it, results in breaking ribs, bruised uh, internal organs, even punctured lungs. So understanding that, you know, while you might have something that does stop a bullet, will it not cripple you? And I, I've got so many different uh, varia or variables that I've tested over the years, and some of the best is this viscoelastic polymer. This, uh, and I'll go into what a viscoelastic is. Uh, I'm also going to do a video on non-Newtonian fluids, viscoelastic polymers, and ferrofluids. Here really soon I want to upload that also by the end of maybe next week. But I'm going to record it while I'm busy actually getting to it. Uh, this really reduces back face deformation, which is very important. It also will pretty much make armor plates or thin plates that you might make because um, it's very flexible it'll actually absorb so much energy you could take blows from a baseball bat um, crowbars that sort of thing and it distributes the energy evenly over your body that's very very important and we'll go into the science and the chemistry of that and explain what a viscoelastic because those two terms together is what makes these polymers so unique you can pick this stuff up online at a shock tech air 2 gel um, it's amazing their whole staff is just really cool I had so many questions when I d found them for because you can buy this stuff for so cheap and I actually got to talk to one of the I think it was the owner at least a salesperson on like we talked on the phone because I was explaining what I was doing and they were kind enough to send me some of the gel samples and because not just the foam and we talked for at least a half an hour on back face deformation he was he seemed at least somewhat excited about my project so that's, that was really cool of them so definitely check out that if you're making your own gear that impact you know you can't beat this foam in comparison to the energy absorption especially if you download their white sheets their white papers when they had this stuff tested in comparison to other foam it blew it out of the water and it's really really cheap you can get a roll of it for like 20 25 bucks that sort of thing for the thinner stuff the higher stuff is of course like 40 45 still though 
amazing. Um, some of the other things I'm going to build, I want to go over that real quick, uh, a, a cure box. Because like I said, it is snowing where I'm from. It gets very cold, so when I use thermoset resins, like epoxy, polyester, that sort of stuff, if it's not warm, it will not cure. And because I also do um, additives, like metal particle additives and that sort of thing, it really affects the temperature. And the problem with that is, is when it's like 10 degrees out, I cannot control the temperature and doing it inside it produces a lot of gases. Even though I vacuum bag most of that stuff, it still can be very difficult to get it to cure all the way through. So I recently ordered a bunch of stuff. I got a, a, a thermal heating device. This is an infrared bulb that they use in um, like reptiles and stuff like that. I also got just a normal comfort heating. I'm making a box using all sorts of different types of insulated shielding to keep the heat in there and different types of thermometers so that way I can tr control the settings, get it right around the temperatures you need to cure it. I also got these great sheets, full length sheets of polycarbonate in. This is some of the best plastic I've ever shot against this by itself. Just this thickness will stop a 38, uh, not 38 special, sorry, just a 380. I believe it was a 380. It's like the same caliber, but just not the 38 special, which is smaller than the 9mm. It's like the same like bullet size, but the grain behind it. I believe it's yeah, very similar. I'll have to look, at, look it up exactly, but I, I tested this, and this stuff is amazing. And I want to build full-length shields, bulletproof shields out of them. You know, like riot shields. And you guys can suggest what kind of shape you want to see it in. Do you want to see it kind of round, like a Captain America? Because this will be the basis, and we'll vacuum form it into whatever shape we want, trim it obviously, and build Kevlar and ceramic and metals off of it and we'll test variables after we get our favorite type, energy absorbing polymers behind it, like the non-Newtonian fluids and the viscoelastic polymers. Behind it I also have some pegboard because I'm making a bigger uh, vacuum forming box. Okay, that'll give us the ability to actually heat it, shrink it down to size. It's incredibly cheap to make and I'll That'll be two of the videos, is making a cure box for thermal set resins and a big vis uh, thermal forming box so that way we can heat up plastics in the oven, shrink it down. I also have heating elements down there specifically for that out for, from toaster ovens that we're going to use so that way we can control the exact temperature to vacuum those things down. Well, anyways, thanks so much for uh, watching my videos, guys. I'm glad that people are very interested. Those will be the armor projects and kind of not really the gadgets, but the stuff we can easily build so we control these variables of temperature and pressure and that sort of thing. I'll show you guys multiple solutions because I've been doing this for a while. I used to have a Venturi vac, finally upgraded to an actual vacuum pump. This thing was less than 100 bucks and it pulls quite a bit. And where you can find cheap tanks to hold a vacuum, which is very, very important, like you know, old propane tanks, helium tanks, that sort of thing, because it's a lot safer to hold uh, vacuum than it is pressure, obviously, because it'll just implode, whereas pressure explodes, right? Simple stuff like that. We'll go over that when we get to those builds. Uh, and then for a gadget, probably because we're hitting the snow season, something I've always wanted to build, which is incredibly reckless and ridiculous, is a rocket propelled sled. So we're going to build a rocket propelled sled. It'll have Teflon on the bottom, big old rockets on the side. That should be a very fun video. <laughs> um, if you guys want to see other ridiculous builds, I'm you know, other than armor, obviously, that's the serious side, and then, you know, ninja smoke bombs and rocket sleds are kind of the, uh, the other side of my builds. I'm also going to be building bulletproof masks. This is a basic template from, you know, the Guy Fox mask that I'm going to be using to make a bulletproof mask, because as we get into this equipment that'll easily allow us to mold these plastics that can stop bullets, then we're going to use those to build off of and actually build our own bulletproof stuff. And I'm gonna take you guys through every step on that. So uh, anyways, thank you guys so much for actually sending me messages, commenting ideas. Someone actually suggested making a bulletproof mask, so that'll be a very soon video too. Uh, uh, please like, share, subscribe, obviously. I really appreciate all that, and please send as much ideas even if you want to make a cycle like a bicycle you know we could we could build a purely plastic bicycle out of 
plastic tubing, carbon fiber sheets, you name it, we can build it. And that, that'll be a really interesting project. So I can imagine some people will be interested in that. So anyways, James Stagg, tech this out, right? Me meow, okay, I'm doing it by myself. No one else is around me that usually chimes in. Later.